Okay, perfect. <coughs> so, hi everyone. My name is Aman, uh, and I'm a software engineer at D at DGraph Labs. Uh, I'll be talking about distribute deep, uh, debugging distributed systems uh, using Dell. Um, so, this is the agenda of the talk. Uh, I'll start with what DGraph is. We'll talk about a little bit of the architecture of DGraph. Um, we'll, I'll give you a little bit into the Dell, uh, and then I'll talk about how we go about debugging a distributed system, and then eventually, or uh, finally, we'll see a demo. Now, uh, before we go into the talk, um, how many people have worked with distributed systems uh, in their career? Show of hands. Okay. How many people have worked with microservices uh, in their career? Have you? I mean, how many people know microservices are distributed systems? <laughs> So everybody actually has worked with distributed systems in their career, right? And this talk is about how you can simplify your debugging using Dell, right? So let's start with, so because I work at DGraph, DGraph is a distributed graph database. Um, my talk will include a lot of the things about DGraph. Those are not, those are just to give you some reference as to how we do it. You can also extend those ideas into how you want to do it. Okay, so what is DGraph? DGraph is a distributed graph database. It is open source. Uh, it's horizontally scalable. It can scale to a large amount of data and many number of nodes. It's highly available. If one node goes down, there are still other nodes, and the system can still function. And it supports distributed multi-key transactions. The interface to the database uh, is a GraphQL or D and DQL. So GraphQL is a language developed by Facebook. Uh, it's for building REST APIs. We also use it to interact with our database. Uh, we also support DQL. DQL is a custom design query language. Uh, it's very similar to gra uh, GraphQL, but gives you a lot more power. And we'll see uh, how it gives you more power. As I said, uh, DGraph supports distributed multi-key client-side transactions. That gives you a lot of flexibility into what you can do on the client side. So you can uh, choose at what point the transaction will begin. You can choose what, at what point the transaction will end. And then you can do lots of things in the middle. DGraph supports strong consistency models. We support snapshot isolation. What that means is that there can be multiple transactions that can run in parallel, and those transactions will not interfere with each other. Each transaction will see a complete snapshot uh, of the database. So it works really well. And then uh, DGraph is cloud native. Uh, if you want to use DGraph today, you could go to cloud.dgraph.io and then sign up and start using DGraph. Uh, and the core is open source. It's available on GitHub. OK, so I'll just give you a quick example of DQL. And again, just to give you an intro how powerful DQL could be. And DQL is DGraph query language. So this is an example. And what we're trying to do here is to find uh, all of a pair of actors who have worked with a director called Jane Campion. And then the constraint is that they have worked together in a movie uh, with another director as well. right? So all of the, all of the pair of the actors who have worked together with Jane Camp, who have worked with Jane Campion once at least, and then uh, they have also worked with another director together in, in one another movie, right? So, if you want to do this in DQ in SQL, it'll be at least three joins, and that's when you'll get to your final result. If you want to do it in DQL, it's a simple three or four graph traversals, and then you'll get to your final answer. So, what I'm doing here is that so line number two is basically uh, trying to find. Um, Jane Campion in the database first. So once we find Jane Campion, then uh, line number three, we find all of the films that Jane Campion has directed. Uh, then we go to line number five. We are trying to find all of the actors uh, who have worked in those movies, uh, who have acted in those movies. This is going to be first join in SQL, which is a graph traversal here. Once we find all of those actors, in line number eight, we find all of the films that these actors have done. right? And then once we find those films, uh, we find their uh, co-actors, right? But uh, if you notice in line number nine, we exclude all of the uh, films uh, that are directed by Jane Campion, which we have already figured out before, right? So just to give you an idea, this is a very complex query, but you can really easily write, in, uh, write, write it in DQL. So this is how DGraph works. Um, I'll give you a sense of DGraph's architecture. So there are two components in DGraph. And again, I'm doing all of this so we can see a demo eventually and how we debug DGraph. So there are two components, uh, zero and alpha. Uh, zero is the coordinator in DGraph. Uh, it coordinates transactions. It is responsible for distributing data across multiple shards. And so all of that is done by DGraph, uh, by zero. 
And then there's a component called alpha. Alpha is a worker node. It does all of the heavy lifting. So it processes queries, mutations, all of, and also takes care of the part of the data that the cluster is, or, or this node is responsible for. Right? So zero is the coordinator, and alpha is your worker. Okay? This is how a typical dgraph cluster looks like. So you'll notice uh, there's always one zero uh, group, which is our coordinator. And for high availability, we usually run three, uh, we usually run zero on three different nodes. Uh, so Z0, Z1, Z2 are all running zero. Um, then there can be any, any number of shards in the database. And each shard, each alpha group is going to be responsible for one shard. Right? And so and each alpha group is going to have, again, three nodes for high availability. Right? So you can talk to any of the alpha nodes, do your queries, do your mutations. Mutations are similar to inserts and upserts in SQL. Right? So you can do all of that with alpha, and it'll coordinate across the cluster and give you the response that you're looking for. Right? So this is how uh, dgraph sort of looks like. Okay, so now we have a little sense of uh, how dgraph is. Uh, we'll look into Dell. Okay, so I'll just do a very quick introduction to Dell, and then when we do a demo, we'll see all the things that you can do with it. So Dell is a debugger. Uh, it allows debugging Go programs. It understands all the constructs that are defined in the Go language. For example, Go routines, channels, all of that, it, it understands. So it can debug them really well. And then you can debug a test, an application, even attached to an existing Go process. So Dell is really cool. And we'll see how we can debug distributed systems using Dell soon. So these are just some examples of how you can uh, set up your debug, uh, how you can start debugging. So first example shows how you, you will debug a package. So it's a really simple command. Dell is the binary that we are running. Debug is the command we are running. And then you pass the package. This package has to have a main function. Because it has a main function, it will run the app. Dell will run, will run the application, and it will start debugging it. Everything that you see after double hyphen uh, is all the arguments that are passed to the uh, package, the function, the binary that you are running. Right? So in, in my case, I'm running alpha. And then I'm pa passing what's the, uh, what the my address, meaning what's the address of the alpha and then some other arguments. So this is how you debug a package. If you want to debug a running Go process, you can directly attach to the process. You only have to know the PID. So you can, you can simply say del attach PID, and it'll start debugging the process. Okay. You can also debug an existing uh, executable. So you have a binary. You want, you want to debug that binary. So what you want to do there is sorry, simply say del exec, and then pa pass the path to the binary that you have. Once you do that, and then double hyphen again with all the other arguments that you want to pass. The thing that you want to do here uh, in the bottom, you'll see, you want to pass the gcplex minus n and minus l. So minus n is for disabling optimization, and minus l for disabling uh, inlining. What that does is the line numbers that you see will not like go weird uh, if, we, if you use these flags while compiling. Right? And one really cool thing that I learned recently is that you can pass minus C flag to the go test command, and it'll give you a binary. And you can use that binary to run your executables. Right? So ultimately, by building, running go build, or by running go test minus C, it'll give you a binary that you can use uh, uh, and then debug using del by del exec. So this is how this basically you'll start debugging your programs using del. And we'll see how once we go into the environment of del, you have lots of choices that you could do. You could step into, you could stop step onto, you can step out, you can continue. So all the debugging things that you usually do are also available in Dell. All right, so let's talk about the uh, topic of the talk, which is debugging a distributed system. So, so building a distributed system is really hard to begin with, right? And now we're trying to debug it, right? So it's even a harder problem to solve. So what do you want to do instead? is, first of all, reproduce the issue. Right? You, have, you see an issue in your system, either in production or while you're testing. Uh, you want to be able to reproduce this issue. Even if you can reproduce this issue once in a few times, once in a few runs, so let's say you run your program 100 times and it produces 10 times, that's really good. Right? Because it has to be consistent, though. Right? And then you can run your program again and again, and then reproduce the issue. And if you can write a test, that's the best. You can run the test again and again, and then uh, reproduce the issue. If you cannot re reproduce the issue, the issue does not even exist. So you cannot debug it. Right? 
So that's our first step. Once we are able to reproduce the issue, we can make an educated guess and see what component in our system is causing that issue. So you want to identify the component and then finally de debug that using Dell. So um, I'll take an exam example of that issue that we saw recently. We're still uh, de debugging part of it. It's not merged, uh, but I'll show you a demo using that. So uh, we call this issue bulk loader snapshot issue. Again, ignore all these big terms that I'm using that are contextual to dgraph. That's not the point of this talk. I'm just giving you an example. So what's happening here is, uh, so this cluster had one coordinator, which is our zero, three nodes running, and then three alpha running, which is just one shard in the cluster. And what we noticed is, so if you see in our alpha group, we have three alphas running, A0, A1, and A2. When we query A0, we got a response. So you see four names that we got. But if we queried A1 and A2, we got no response. There's no data in the response. So this clearly seemed like a problem to us. And then we decided to debug it. So first step, reproduce the issue. So we wrote a test. And it was actually not that hard to reproduce this issue. Uh, so we followed the same steps that we were doing manually to reproduce the issue. And we were, we were able to write a simple integration test uh, that, would re that will give us this, that issue back. So first step is done. Uh, second step is identify the component. So now this is very obvious, right? Because A1 and A2 are not responding uh, to our queries, right? That means something is wrong with them, right? So we're going to debug them. Uh, there's another tool that I use to delve with and dgraph is, of course, there. There's another tool called Terminator. It's a terminal. You can split windows easily and, and so on. So let's see a demo of it, right? OK, so we're going to see the same issue and try to debug it, and I'll show you how we use Dell there. OK, so the so first step is we want to compile our dgraph binary. Uh, so for that, um, we just use make install. We have a make file. The interesting thing that I'll sh I want to show you here is that we use the same GC flex that I showed you before. Is the font visible to towards the back? OK, I'm going to assume it is visible. So if you pass these flex, the debugging is going to be nicer. The build is going to be debug build. Right? So we are doing the same thing. So I'm going to make install, which will give me a binary of dgraph. So I have the binary of dgraph. I also want to do the same thing with test. Right? So uh, my test is here, one second. OK, so this is the test that I showed you just now. And we're going to use the same test to debug uh, the system. So what's happening in the test is, is not uh, a lot. Um, it's the setup. Setup takes a little bit of a work, because when we run our bulk loader, so bulk loader is the tool that allows you to initially set up the cluster with large amount of data, and then can execute and, and go along. So we do all the setup in the beginning, start our 0, uh, run, the, run the bulk loader, and then start our alphas. And then finally, we run our test, which is simple. We have a query. We expect a certain response from it, and then we should get that. And we should get that from all the three alphas that we have in our system. Okay. So we'll also create a uh, binary for this uh, test, so we can. So that's so go test is my command. I want a binary. I don't want to run the test right now. And then GC plex, GC plex, and this is an integration test. So I think my binary is already there. So that's my binary integration to that test. And so that's what we're going to run uh, to debug it. So if you again notice, in our test, we set up the cluster, and then we run the test, so we don't have to do anything else. Uh, so let's debug it. So again, I'm using delve exec here, passing the path to the binary, which is, which is in the same folder. And then the test I want to run is the test that's failing. So this will give me a delve prompt. The program has not run yet. And so what we want to do is we want to set up. So we'll put a breakpoint, uh, and then we want the cluster setup to be complete, but we don't want queries to run. Because at the, when queries run, something is clearly going wrong. That, that's what we want to de debug. So I'll put a breakpoint at line number 114. So the way uh, you put a breakpoint in Dell is just say B. Uh, you can also say breakpoint if you are a fan of typing. And then I'll just say B. And then, uh, hold on. yeah. So that's my file name. And then the line number is 114. So file name colon 114 is how you do it. So, so it says breakpoint is set, and we're good to go. You can list all these breakpoints by saying PP, I think. Yeah. So this is the breakpoint that we just set. Right? So our breakpoint is set up. 
Now C is for continue, so you want program to execute until a breakpoint is hit. Just press C, and I'm going to press Enter. So now it's setting up zero first. My zeros are up and running. Then it's going to run the bulk loader. It'll, it'll push all the data. And then it's finally going to set up alphas. So now alphas are also healthy. And then finally, my program will stop. OK, so my program stops at line number 114, as we had put a breakpoint there. Okay. Now what we have is our cluster is up and running. And we use Docker to set up the cluster. So if I do a Docker PS here, okay. so you see uh, I have three alphas running, and then I have three zeros running. So that's my cluster, three zero and three alpha for high availability. Okay. And the plus the process that we want to debug is either A1 or A2, the alpha 1 or alpha 2. Right? Uh, so because um, we cannot debug directly inside Docker container, we just do it PSX. So you can see, again, same thing. There are three zeros running, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 2, and then alpha 0, alpha 1, and alpha 2. Right? So the one that we want to debug is alpha 1 and alpha 2. So we'll just pick one. And in this case, uh, we'll execute. Delve exit, uh, Delve attach. Okay. So this is not going to work because the process is running inside the Docker container, and we are not—we don't own the process, even if we are root. Uh, even if the user is in the root uh, root group, so we can just le simply use sudo, and then we will debug that. Okay. So now we are attaching Delve. Uh, to our alpha 1, and then we'll debug alpha 1. I'm going to press C quickly so that the, so when you attach the process, the process stops at that point. I, that's why I don't want the process to stop, because then heartbeats will stop, and the cluster won't function well. So I press C, the process is still running. Okay. So now if you see, we have two Dell sessions running. There is one in the upper terminal, which is debugging our test, and there's one in the lower terminal. That's debugging our alpha one. And we have six processes actually running. We are only debugging one of them right now. Okay? So, uh, so I'm going to jump a little bit here. So I know uh, this. So we're going to run the query. And then before we run the query, we want to put a breakpoint in our dgraph process, saying that, hey, when you're processing the query, stop. I want to debug. Right? And I know that that happens at line number 2757. Okay? So this is where the query processing happens. So I'll put a breakpoint at line number 2757. So, so right now, the process is running, right? So you don't have del prompt. If you notice at the bottom, I'm going to put this up. So now upper terminal is debugging uh, dgraph, and lower terminal is our test. So if you notice, uh, there's no del prompt. So you want to press a control C, so you get a del prompt. right? And then that's where it's right now waiting for some socket to get some data. So now I can say breakpoint, and then that's in query.go uh, at line number 2757. Right, so that's my breakpoint, and then I'll press continue again. So my system is up and, or my dgraph process is up and running again. And then now I can go back to my test, and I'm going to put the test terminal up again so everybody can see. So. We are so now it's gonna execute one one four. So I'm gonna press n. N is for next. It's gonna execute one line of the code. Okay. So that is on. And then uh, we also wanna execute this. This is just a constant defined. Okay. And then what we are doing here is we are iterating over the three alphas that we have, and then setting up a client for each alpha, and then trying to query that alpha. So we know our a0 alpha will return the right response, but A1 and A2 won't. So we will we will continue for A0, we will not stop. But for A1, we want to stop and then debug that. So uh, again, N is for next. The one cool thing I like about Delp is that if you're running the la last command, you can just press Enter. Right? So if I press Enter, it'll just jump to the uh, next line. Right? So it is setting up the client still, and then deferring the cleanup. Now. This function actually is going to do the query and then uh, talk to the alpha. So we'll go inside this function and see what this function is doing. So for going inside is S. S is for step into. 
So now we are inside this function query alpha with. So first step is, is going to log into the database. So I'm going to press N again. Once I log in, uh, yeah. right. So uh, we are still trying to log in. Okay, something went wrong. Okay, I'm going to set this up quickly again. This was not supposed to happen. So again, I'm going to execute the delve exit command uh, for running our test, which uh, I already did that. And then I'm going to put a breakpoint here. And then set up my cluster again. I think it most likely happened because I waited too long. So my alpha 1 is running, alpha 2 is up, and the final alpha is also up. Okay. And then we'll debug alpha 1. No, this is alpha 2. So let's debug that. Let's debug alpha 1. So we are back to so client dot query went through. Uh, it did not it did not stop our alpha one that's still running, right? Because it is querying the alpha zero, not alpha one. So we're gonna get through this. This is uh, this is supposed to pass. It is not supposed to fail. Now when we query alpha one, so now we are in the second iteration of the loop. We are going to query alpha one, and then we'll go inside the query alpha with function again. And again, it's trying to log into alpha alpha a one now. And you see uh, the process below they have stopped that because now it's trying to query alpha one, and then uh, it's trying to log in. So I'm going to actually skip that. Yeah, now it'll do a do do a query. So I'm in the upper terminal doing next, and it'll stop it again. Right? When you do a login, that also does a query, and we don't we, we don't want to debug that query. Right? So let's debug our. Um, query part now, right? OK, so I'll show you some of the you get the idea. I'll show you more commands of Delve, and then we'll just conclude the talk. So we already saw next is for n, and then continuous for c, and s is for step into. You can step into a function if you want. You can also step out. So if I want to step out of this function, I'll, there's a command called so. So step out is so. So meaning that you're executing a function. You realize that this function is actually, I know what this function is doing not relevant, you can simply say step out and start executing the uh, function after that, the code after that, basically. And then we al also see B, B is for breakpoint. So you can specify the line number where you want to put the breakpoint. And then uh, there's BP for listing all the breakpoints. You can check. And then you can also clear these breakpoints. I can say clear one. I'll clear the breakpoint one. There's another uh, L is for listing where you are in the code. So we are executing line number 2757 in the code. Uh, yeah, And then another cool thing you could do is go routines. You can list all the go routines that are running right now in this process. Uh, and then you can also switch go routines if you want. There are like lots of go routines running as expected. Let's say you want to switch to go routine uh, 334. So you can say go routine 334 and check. So now we switch from 273 to 334. And we can check the stack. Now it's executing a different code, basically. Right? You can go back to 273 as well. And then we are back to where we were. Right? We are processing. Yeah, we are processing. Uh, we, are, we are at the point 2757 again. Right? So you have all these commands. There are more commands. You can press help, and it'll show you uh, all the other things. But if we had more time, eventually we'll see um, that the a Z, uh, the A1 and A2 does not even have the data to return back to us, right? And so, if if you look look into further, what we realize is that A0 is supposed to send data to A1 and A2, and A0 is the actual culprit, right? A0 did not even send the data back. So now we'll set up our uh, Dell environment again. Now it it could be a smaller environment. We don't need A1 and A2 or Z1 and Z2. You can simply set up with Z0 and A0, and then uh, debug that process. We have to do this in 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 loop. 
until you actually get to the point where the issue is. So this is how you debug using Dell. The basic idea is uh, use your context and try to simplify as much as possible. Try to break down your problem into smaller problem that is easy to debug. Okay. Uh, I'll give you two quick tips that I have used a lot. Uh, one is uh, debugging deadlock. So if there's a deadlock in your system and you want to figure out where it is, uh, Usually, you, will, you probably would have used a sync.mutex to debug it. Uh, you can augment your sync.mutex with your own implementation of it, but internally, it actually has a sync.mutex. Right? And then you define lock and unlock functions. You ultimately call mutex.lock and mutex.unlock, but you can add your print statements there. That lock is acquired and lock is released. Now, you can, in your logs, you can use Linux tools like grep and wc to figure out how many times lock, were, lock was acquired and released. You can count that and see if there was a lock that was acquired, but not released. And that could be a reason for that lock. And then one last slide. Uh, you can also use time.sleep. This is, I've actually used this a lot. And so what happens is that, let's say you're trying, your system uh, faces some problem if there's a large input, right? And that's, it's really hard to reproduce that large input. So what do you do instead? Uh, so if there's a large input, your processing will take longer, right? But you don't have the large input to re reproduce that issue. So what you can do is you can add time.sleep in your code to, to take so that the, that part of your code will take longer to process because it's sleeping. Okay? So that's another cool trick that I've used a lot. And I think that's all. Happy debugging. Um, I just want to quickly mention one more thing. So I have moved to Jaipur now. I was in Bangalore before. And if you're from Jaipur or travel through Jaipur and we are trying to build a community there, so do reach out to me. Thank you so much.